Hey guys, it's Jake. I'm doing my uh, respiratory and cardiac health assessment video. I'm going to show you around the room so there's no notes anywhere or anything like that. Chloe's agreed to be my patient today. So let me give you a quick 360. Okay, I'm going to put the camera down and readjust it, and we'll begin. Okay, so the door has been closed to provide for privacy. I'm going to pull the curtain over here. I've washed my hands already, and I put my gloves on for the exam, so we're being protective of myself and the patient. I've checked Chloe's chart. And can I see your hand, please? I'm going to check her wristband. Could you tell me your name and your birthday? I'm Chloe, 228 Okay. So what brings you into the hospital today, Ms. Bell? I'm Jake. I'll be your student nurse. I don't know if I'm going to get my chest, but I don't want to be Okay. We can help you with that today. So before we start, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm, sure. So since we're here for your cardiac and respiratory today, do you have any problems with your heart that I should know about, like heart disease, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, anything like that? Um, no. Have you had any past surgeries on your heart or anything like that? Um, no. Do you have a family history of any kind of heart conditions? Um, no. Okay. How about respiratory? Do you have, have you ever had severe bronchitis or breathing problems or asthma or anything um, like that? No. No? Do you have a family history of anything like that? Um, no. Okay. Are you in any pain today? Um, no, I'm not. No? Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me before we begin? Uh, no. Okay, so I'm going to start with your temperature. See how you feel. Her forehead is nice and warm, not too hot. It's a normal temperature. I'm going to start by checking her radio pulse in her hand. Radio plus in both hands is a plus two. And there's no pounding or throbbing or anything like that. I'm going to check brachial. I would say both the brachials are about even on both sides. They're about a plus one each. I'm going to check cap refill and her fingers. All the fingers cap refill is under three seconds, so that's good and healthy. If it was over that, we would have a circulation problem. As I'm assessing the patient's arms, the hair appears evenly distributed. There's no cuts or lesions or anything like that on her arms. Her skin color is appropriate for her ethnicity, and I don't see any other glaring issues with that. Now, we're going to do the push-pull test with your hands, okay? So I'm going to grab you like this, and I want you to push against me. Good. Now pull away from me. Good. Excellent strength in the hands. No problems with anything like that. We're going to try the finger test now. Now do the same as before. Push against me. Okay. Now pull away. Good. Now the other hand. Okay. Now pull away. Thank you. Good strength in the hands. Nothing else I can notice about that. So that's good. I am going to move down and to the legs. We're going to start with pop the teal pulse. I can't feel the pulse in her knees, so we're going to move down. Could you lay down for me, please? I'm going to check the pulse in the anterior tibial down here by the ankle. 
or posterior tibial, my bad. Both of her posterior tibical, uh, tibial pulses are about a plus two, which is good. I'm going to check dorsalis pedis pulse on the top of the foot. I would say her dorsal, uh, dorsalis pedis pulse is about a plus one on both feet. No abnormalities otherwise. Okay. Can you lift your leg one at a time for me just to see how good range of motion on the other one? Thank you. Now we're going to do the same test I do with your hands, except we're going to do it with your feet. Okay? I'm going to push against you. Can you push back? Okay, can you check the foot? Okay. Other one? Come back. Good. While you're laying like this, I'm going to check. Your jugular vein for any kind of distension. I'm not witnessing any as she's laying down. Can you sit up slowly for me? As she's sitting up, I'm not noticing any distension of the jugular vein, which means her circulation is working well and there's no backups or anything like that. As I was going through my assessment, I noticed that her temperature in both her arms and legs is normal. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, which indicates good circulation. Can you face towards me, please? Okay, the next thing I'm going to check is her carotid arteries. Her coronary artery pulse on both sides is about a plus two. I don't feel any throbbing or thrills or anything like that, which is good. I'm going to listen with my stethoscope now for any bruise or anything like that. Okay, my listening results are that I didn't hear any bruise or anything like that. The pulse sounded good, and I didn't hear any abnormalities, which is good. Next, I'm going to assess the heart by going over the five key locations. So starting with the second intercostal uh, right, I'm going to feel down from the xiphoid process for that. So we have that here. This is the aortic section. I'm going to do a percuss on that. Then I move over to the second intercostal space, left side, sternal border. And this is our pulmonary area. We're going to percuss. I'm going to move down one to Herb's point, which is the uh, third intercostal space, left sternal border. I'm going to percuss. Now I'm going to move down to the fifth intercostal space, left sternal border, which is going to be the tricuspid valve, which is right up in here. I'm going to percuss. And for the last one, I'm going to move over to the mitral valve, which is the fifth intercostal space, uh, midclavicular line, which would be right about here when the apex is the hardest. I'm going to percuss. And upon assessing that, I'm not seeing any throbbing of that mitral valve or anything like that on the skin. Let me just check to make sure. Nope, oh, it appears normal, which is good. Now I'm going to listen to those same areas with my stethoscope for heart sounds and see how everything sounds for any S1 deviations or two or murmurs or anything like that. I'll tell you what I find.
Okay. Heart sound sounded good and normal. I was able to hear uh, Love Dub S1, S2. There were no murmurs or any kind of irregular patterns or anything like that. And uh, everything sounded good. So we have a check out on that. So now I'm going to palpate those areas. Let me know if this is painful, okay? Okay, that's good. Overall, the general condition of the cardiac system seems good after the review of what we did. I'm gonna switch over to lung now. So we're gonna percuss again the chest area. There was no dullness to the percussions or anything like that. Uh, I didn't feel any hard masses or anything like that on palpation. The same for when I did heart. I heard a slight resonance in it, which was expected. Now I'm going to listen for lung sounds and we'll see what I uh, hear. You need to take some deep breaths for me. Okay, lung sound sounds good. I don't hear any wheezing or rails or crackling or anything like that, ronchi. As I was listening, I was also observing the patient. She's not using accessory muscles to breathe and her breathing seems relaxed. Her facial expressions are relaxed. She doesn't seem like she's in any pain, which is good. Um, all the breathing and ceiling is good and healthy. To finish that off, we're gonna listen to the back uh, lung sounds and see how everything sounds back there. Could you just bear out for me, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to begin by percussing. Now the reason that I made the pattern I did is because Ms. Bell's scapula are right here and it would sound different if I percussed here or when I listen here later or palpate. It's not going to produce the same result. So I'm avoiding this area here because of the bone resonance and I go up this way to hear the lungs from the side when I'm going to be getting to that part. So the lung field begins, we have C7 here which is the notch on the back of the neck. You go down the spine until you feel for T7 which is about here, and then you go down three more to T10, and that's about the extent of the lung field. When her lungs are fully inflated, it goes down an additional two more to about T12, but we're gonna stay at T10. When I wanna assess the sides of the lungs, I go back up to T8, and I go around to the side. I feel for the lateral lung expansion, and I feel between T8 and T6. I feel and I listen. 
see how everything sounds. So since we already did percussion, I'm going to do palpation. Let me know if this is painful, okay? okay. I'm going to listen now for lung sounds from the back. Ooh. Hold on, the lights went out. There we are. Sorry about that. Must have been a power outage. Let's get back to it. Okay. Can you take some deep breaths for me? lungs from the back sound clear again no wheel uh no wheezing no rails no walk eye no popping no wheezing everything sounded good and healthy i didn't hear anything that was of note so that's good the next thing i'm going to do is feel for vibrations and tactile primitus there was no crepitation when i was palpating so we're going to see how this goes so when i put my hands on you can you say 99 99 99 so as I fell down, I could feel the vibrations start to trail off as I went down and around, and they became stronger as I went back up this way, as I got closer to the origination, which is good. So, with all that, that was a good result. And can you spin back around for me? <laughs> Other than that, I think uh, this concludes our health survey. I think you're in excellent health with your cardiac and respiratory, and I'll get all this noted down, and uh, I'll come back with the results. Well, thank you. Yep.